Hi, in today's video we're going to be looking at how to draw this rhino beetle and as you can see when I was practicing it, my son got involved and added his creative touch to it too. <laughs> to draw this beetle you're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil and your pencil crayons. Let's get started. Now the, the shapes of this beetle are actually pretty simple. We've just got one big oval for the back of his body. You want to draw this quite lightly. Um, so I'm going to press a bit harder so that you can see it. But you need to press really lightly. We don't want to see these lines at the end. And then overlapping with this oval, we're going to draw a circle, a circular shape. And this is going to help us get the shape of his head. Okay, I'm switching to a, a marker now, but you can carry on with your pencil. So we're going to use the, the shapes that we've just drawn to help us get, get the body. I'm going to start where the oval and the circle overlap. This is going to be the top of his back. And it's going to come down, go past halfway, and then let your line come out a little bit. And then we're going to join it back to this edge. Um, so I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to bring it down on the line of the oval we've just drawn. But before I get to the edge here, I'm just going to let the line come up a little bit and it's going to go back down. So it's almost like a wave or an S shape that we've just drawn here. And now we're going to use the circle to help us draw the head. So I'm sure you've noticed that he looks a bit like a rhino, which is how he got his name. And we're going to curve it in. I'm going to come just inside my circle to draw the first part of his head, the left hand side of it. And it's going to curve back out. So I've drawn a C shape here. For the bottom of his head, it needs to flatten out a bit. So he hasn't actually got a round head. We're just using the round part of it to help us draw it. So just cut off the bottom part of the circle, draw a line that is straight. And almost come up to the edge of your circle. Now we're going to use this circle to help us draw the curve of his horn. Don't go to halfway up the circle, so stop just shy of that. I'm just going to stop it there because I want to get where I need to finish first. So sometimes when you're drawing a line and you don't know where it's going to end, it can make it a little tricky. So about two thirds of the way along the bottom of the head, there's this little like armor plate that joins the two and it, it, it's a curve. Okay, and it ends about halfway up the circle. Okay, so I've drawn this, almost looks like two little waves. And I know that this is where I want my horn to end, over here. So you can see it's got to go from that thick to that thick. You need to bring it around in a nice curve. Okay, then the other side of this armor plate, it's also like another wave shape that comes up. Right, so now the rhino beetle has got a hard shell on the top, but he's actually quite soft and furry along the bottom. So we're just going to do a little bit of furriness. I'm just drawing jagged little light lines. Right, once we've um, drawn this line for the furry part on the, the bottom of his body, we can add in his legs. Now we're going to start with just little stick legs and we're only drawing the legs on one side of his body. Sometimes with an insect, if you add in both the legs from both sides, it can look really busy at the bottom um, and it can get confusing when you're drawing it. So we're just going to draw three legs, even though he has six. We're just pretending we can't see the others. So at the back of his body, I've drawn an L shape for his leg or a V. Maybe it's more of a V than an L. And then where his head and his body meet, we're going to have another leg that's going out to the back. Also with a bit of a curve to it. 
and underneath his head we'll have his third leg. Also got like a little feeler thing over here. Now that we have the shape that we want our leg to be, we can add in the sections and I'm just drawing almost these rectangles. Um, well, it's kind of a cross between a rectangle and a triangle. If you imagine he's wearing lots of little pairs of bell bottom jeans. Um, so his legs are in these little sections. And he has a little foot at the bottom that's pretty much a triangle. Right, let's start colouring in our beetle now. So I'm going to start with his shell at the top and I'm starting with my black pencil crayon. Along the top of his back here, I'm going to just colour in and I'm going to press quite hard. So when you're blending pencil crayons, it's a lot like pastels. If you press hard, you don't leave space for other colours. And when you press lightly, then you do leave space for other colours. So we want it to be nice and dark on the top of his back and then slowly press lighter and lighter as you come down. It takes a bit of practice to get this gradual shading, but it's just all about how hard you press on the page. Okay, this um, section of the back here, we want to keep it quite light. That's where the light's going to hit the back, so just be careful not to do too much shading over that area. The other place where there's going to be dark shading is where the head meets the body. So there'll be a shadow from the, the head on the body. And then again, just slowly start pressing lighter and lighter. Now, pencil crayons can be very sensitive to the surface underneath them. So to get nice, smooth colouring, you need to make sure that you're pressing on a book, something smooth. The grain of my table is showing through, so I'm just going to put some paper underneath it. So if you're finding your, your colouring is not looking as smooth as you would like, just get a really soft, smooth coloured, covered book um, or a couple of pieces of paper and that should make the, the colouring a lot smoother. Yeah, we also, it's almost like we're outlining him now. I'm going to do some dark colouring along the bottom of his body and then lighten it. So lots of people know of the big five big five animals in, South, well, in Africa, uh, but there's also uh, the little five and the rhino beetle is one of the little five. We also have the elephant shrew which is like a little mouse with a really long nose and there's a lion ant and a leopard tortoise and the last one is the buffalo weaver which is a bird. So you can see here I've coloured in this section and this section pressing on paper and you can see how much smoother the colouring in is compared to the top section which I coloured on the table. What I'm going to do now is also add a bit of dark shading to the head. Now when you're shading the head try and leave just a little bit of white on this corner. I'll show you on the finished piece. I've left just a little section of white and it's almost like the light is catching it. It really makes your picture pop. Um, it's not going to show up as well on mine because I've drawn it with a pen. So get as close as you can to the line while still leaving just that little section of white there. Okay, so we're going along the edge here. This middle part is going to be the darkest part, so I'm just going to add a bit more dark shading here. Right, some dark shading along the bottom. Pencil crayons, is, it's all about working with layers of colour. So don't press too hard the first with the first colour that you use. You want to be able to blend the colours together. You can always add more black in later. It's almost like we are just outlining each section of his body. Right, so I'm just going to add a little bit more of black shading along the bottom half here. Now what I'm going to do is take a bit of purple and add it in. So I'm starting where I've pressed hard with the black. Just colouring over it. So as I said earlier, a little bit of purple and blue can be added to anything that you're shading black just to make it a little bit more interesting and it makes the colour look richer. If you just shade it in with black, it can look a little bit dull and boring. So purple is a slightly darker colour than red. So I'm going to use purple as my darker shading. So I'll add a bit more purple on the bottom of his body and a bit more of the blue on the top of his body. Over this light section here, I'm adding some purple. I'm not pressing hard with the purple, so I'm just doing a lot of really light coloring. And just a small amount of purple along the top. 
often in school we're taught to colour in straight lines or neatly, but actually I find that colours blend together better if you colour in different directions really lightly. Right, so I'm going to add my blue now. And I'm just pressing really lightly here, so I'm not pressing very hard with my blue crayon. Once you're finished, you might find you need to take your black again um, and just darken some areas. So I'm adding a bit more dark shading around the back here. Although we want to have the blue and the purple in there, it's still a black bug and we want to make sure that people can see that it's a black bug. Just going to add a bit more blue. If you find that your light spots are not quite as light as you want them to be, you could use an eraser. It doesn't work for all pencil crayons, but some pencil crayons, they'll erase almost like a, a pencil does. So if you'd like to lighten up a few areas, you can use your eraser as a drawing tool. Um, you also, if you still have this line at the top from the circle that helps you draw your head, you can erase that because we don't want to see that at the end. Okay, what we're going to move on to next is this little fluffy bit under his body. Um, so just pick a couple of your brown pencil crayons and we're going to start with your darkest one. That will be directly underneath the bug. Just going to turn my page so that my hand is really comfortable. Do a bit of this dark shading. And from there I'm just going to draw a couple of lines going down. And then just work through the browns that you have. I'm even using my gold colour. The odd little line coming out like that will make it look a lot fluffier. And then we're just going to finish it off with our black pencil crayon, adding a few of the darker shadows and flecks into the bottom of his body. And again, a bit of dark shading underneath his belly. So it's almost like the top part of his body is making a shadow over the bottom part. Now for his little legs, we are going to try and tie the two colours that we've used above together. So I'm going to use a bit of purple, a bit of my gold colour, um, and some black and brown. And what I'm going to start doing with my black, is just almost outlining each of these little sections of his leg. And then I'm going to go with my purple and just add a little line in each of them. I've added the line on the left hand side of each of these little sections. A little bit of my golden on the right hand side. Um, and then you can just take your brown pencil crown and colour over any of the little bits of white that are sticking out. Um, and then to finish it off, just do a little bit of darker colouring with your blue and your purple on the, the shell of the beetle. And make sure that there is a little bit of purple visible on the legs. It'll just tie the picture together. Oopsie, nearly forgot to colour in his little front feeler. I'm just doing that with a little bit of the purple and the gold colour. And there we have our rhino beetle.
If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. And if this is your first time watching a Get Started video, why not subscribe to our channel? We put up awesome videos every week. If you have any questions about the little five or um, drawing a rhino beetle, please leave them in the comment section below. And in the comment section below, why don't you let me know which of the baby five you would like to do next?